Hi, I'm Dr. Sevanti Limai. I'm the Director of Medical and Precision Oncology and Oncology Research at Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital in Mumbai, India. August 1st was World Lung Cancer Day. Around this occasion, we have Dr. Balaj Halmos, who is a professor of medicine at Albert Einstein College of Medicine and director of oncology at Montefiore Medical Center, thoracic oncology as well. And he is visiting us here at uh, Reliance Foundation Hospital. He's gracing us on this auspicious occasion. And we are hosting him here this morning for a podcast. We would like to take his reflection regarding lung cancer and the status of lung cancer globally. Thank you, Balaj. Thank you so much. It's an honor to host you here today at Reliance Foundation Hospital. Thank you for making time. Well, namaskar, Savanti. Namaskar, namaskar, everybody else listening to the podcast. <laughs> namaskar, Thank you so everybody. much for the invite. What, what a special occasion. So we have said this, and it has been a joke between me and you. You have been uh, my senior, my mentor from the Columbia Presbyterian days. It is such. Uh, it, it is so heartwarming to be able to host you here today. But there's a joke between us where I say, Dr. Balaji Halmos. And uh, you have had such a soft corner for India, for Indians, for Mangolasi, and uh, all things Indian, I think. And exactly. I just love to be <laughs> here. It's, it's a fantastic country, uh, an amazing country of a billion and a half of, of, of my friends, in a way, uh, for the last 30 years ever since actually moving to New York City. I've had an incredible collection of friends. And now this is my second time being able to visit India, uh, the country of Taj Mahal and Chicken Tikka, and my favorite mango last year as <laughs> well. So it's always yeah. amazing to be yeah. here. This time I've already visited Chennai, yeah. Kochi, Pune. I'm here in the great city of Mumbai, moving on to Delhi. So what an exciting time. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, uh, great for you to have made time in your very busy tour. Uh, coming to a discussion on lung cancer and, and truly I did not want to miss this opportunity uh, and thank you for lending your voice to raise lung cancer awareness in a country where we actually have very limited awareness regarding lung cancer. So I'll begin with by asking since you are a world leader in lung cancer you have a global stand. You look at the entire management of lung cancer from a very higher view, from a helicopter view, as we say. How do you find this different as you go around talking to oncologists in India, going through different cities? Was there a difference or you found this being similar to what we have in the US? Yeah, from my helicopter, <laughs> yes. I, I, I get a very nice view of, of, of physicians across the globe, um, and, and, and in, in particular in India. I think, I think we have the same mission, and that mission is to provide the best care for our patients with any cancer diagnosis, including lung cancer. And we're all excited about the great science that the last 20 years has made such a difference as to being able to do better for our patients with a diagnosis of lung cancer, thinking about precision oncology, biomarker driven precision oncology, and immunotherapy making a huge difference. So if you look at the outcome of patients, even with advanced forms of lung cancer, each decade, you know, we're seeing a dramatic, dramatic advance, major improvements in outcome. And actually some of our patients can say, well, now long term, in fact, we're starting to believe that thanks to immunotherapy, thanks to precision medicine, some of our patients can go on with excellent functioning life for extended periods of time. Maybe some of them are even cured from metastatic lung cancer. A very different era, and we're all excited to make sure that we provide those advances to our patients, whether that's in India, whether that's in New York City. I think our mission, our passion is the same. Wow, so well said. I think um, one word that I will carry forward from what you've just said, is some of the stage fours we even cured. You know, it was unheard of. In 2009, when I started my first faculty position, right before joining, I remember having this conversation as I was selecting which uh, organ system to pursue. 
lung cancer used to be a death sentence and you are a leader involved in the first target discoveries when we talk about EGFR positive lung cancer, the first target to be found and treated with targeted therapy, bringing about a paradigm shift in how a stage 4 lung cancer patient would live. Any reflection of you know, it still how gives it me has just been? Such an incredible thrill to think back at those days where, yes, indeed, when I trained every single person with metastatic lung cancer who was receiving toxic chemotherapy with very limited benefits and just marching towards ultimate death. That was clear cut in a year, year and a half. Um, you know, the chemotherapy was almost like, why do we do it? Yeah. So I understand the nihilism around lung cancer. But at that time, something has changed. Something has changed with the discovery that we can identify certain subsets of patients with lung cancer, where we can find defects in the cancer cell that we can use to our advantage, use targeted therapies to convert, you know, what's a deadly disease into a manageable disease. At that time, with targeted therapies, with un un discovering egf mutated lung cancer. Soon afterwards, we learned about ALK positive, RAS positive. Now we have 10 different molecular subsets. Each and every oncologist needs to, needs to carefully look at to make sure we don't miss the opportunity to offer these very effective targeted treatments to our patients. Now we have generations of new agents. We have combinations we can sequence. There's uh, so much more in our little kitchen, yeah. you know, to get the right spices together, you know, for our patients, you know, tikka masala to, to yeah. taste, taste, taste the best over time. And on top of that, we can add the new discoveries of immunotherapy that our immune system we can use as well to our advantage because it can recognize many lung cancers as foreign. We just need to kind of energize the immune system a little bit with immunotherapies that are quite effective and can be quite well tolerated. With those two sets of discoveries, managing lung cancer today is day and night as compared to 20 years ago. So that nihilism should be disappearing. We need to bring all these discoveries to our patients today. We need to diagnose them in time. We need to get the biomarker you know, testing done in time and then look at that incredible spectrum, find the right you know, regimen and, 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 and hope for the best. And that, that hope and that promise, that rainbow is true. It's, it's a reality today. Amazing. So well put. The nihilism around lung cancer has to be left. It has to be abolished. It has to be left behind. We need to stand together and reach out to your doctor, to your center, figure out the biomarker. Figuring out biomarker is most critical in lung cancer, which gets diagnosed a lot of times in advanced stages. Being breath aware, being lung aware is most critical. Lung cancer can happen in smokers as well as non-smokers. Be aware that this could be a symptom of lung cancer. Testing and figuring out the biomarker is very critical because just right now we heard from Dr. Halmos how the treatment can either be targeted therapy or immunotherapy. And both these modalities have b brought about a paradigm shift in the treatment of lung cancer and lung cancer patients are living much, much, much longer and some of them even with stage 4 disease are getting cured. Cured is a heavy word and with that I ask my next question, Balaj. When we say cured, earlier we actually cringed when we said cured for a stage 4 patient and we were afraid, you know, someone would really look at us um, as if we were lying. But I really now m understand what you mean as we have patients around us who are off therapy for several years, who had stage four disease, but have no disease now and actually are living their lives and living the challenges of a routine life, which is truly a luxury by any standards. So. Do you think immunotherapy would really bring about that change that we are looking for? I don't think any of us had the idea 20 years ago that we could be talking about cure in metastatic lung cancer. I think he would have been looked at as a crazy person. Huh. And it's amazing to, to see that in 20 years we have taken this magic carpet as thoracic oncologists. We've been flying on that magic carpet 
arriving in 2025 at an era that we can say, yes, we can cure some patients, not everyone, but some. And if we can cure some, next year we should be able to cure more, and the yes. next year we should be able to cure more. So, so this is a change in mentality. This is a change in kind of our, our, our outlook you know, as, as a field. And we're seeing the dividends of that. If you look at the statistics each year, you know, year after year, lung cancer leads now in terms of how quickly the, the lung cancer death rates are dropping around the world. We've seen a beautiful representation of that just a few weeks ago from France, yes. where they look at statistics decade by decade. And the last decade is amazing. Suddenly there's a huge jump, not a tiny step, a huge jump ahead in terms of improving mortality, reducing actual deaths from lung cancer. And I must say that I love precision medicine, I love immunotherapy, but that's not the only reason why it's happening. It's about early detection, it's about lung cancer screening, Absolutely. it's about our surgeons, pulmonary physicians, and radiation, radiation oncologists have better tools. And then we have our biomarkers and targeted therapies and immunotherapies. And there's patient advocacy groups out there, you know, relaying that message so that it gets out. Uh, so it, it's a team effort. It's a team effort, but it's a team that we love to be, you know, part of. Uh, that, that's working very well globally. And you're such an incredible leader of that here for precision medicine and thoracic oncology. So it's just such a pleasure to be with you today. Balaj, uh, you know, as, as I hear you, I'm, I'm just so, so thrilled. You can see the smile on my face. There's so much reassurance and hope that is in your voice. And that is from the passionate leader that you are and how you have dedicated your entire life to discovery and management of, of lung cancer patients. And truly, this message that's coming through Dr. Halmos, wherein we are not surviving longer with lung cancer today just because of precision and biomarkers and the current treatment, but many other things including the patient support groups. I take this moment to commend uh, Lung Connect, which operates out of Tata Memorial Hospital, which has actually brought together hundreds of thousands of lung cancer uh, survivors today across the country online and provides direction and help. We want, we welcome such efforts, such initiatives everywhere. We at Reliance Foundation Hospital are also trying to come together and contribute. The other message through the conversation just now was also of lung cancer screening and early detection. And uh, I would like to uh, with pride, share this information with you that at Reliance Foundation Hospital, we received a grant from Federal Bank, one of the banks out here, to screen 1,000 high-risk subjects of any cancer. And we chose to screen 1,000 subjects of, for high risk for lung cancer. And we have just almost completed our study. We are to present our data. At, we have been chosen to present the data at uh, uh, WCLC 2025. And uh, here we have done, we have pre-screened with an algorithm. We figured out patients who are at high risk for lung cancer. And we have then done low-dose CT scan and liquid biopsy in addition to all other routine health screening for these subjects. So just a very small contribution but a way to recognize the need and elevate the cause for lung cancer awareness, early detection and screening. What would you, would you have any message for the masses who may be watching this podcast with regards to awareness, lung cancer awareness, screening and early detection and what would you give out as a message to the regular masses of how they should be aware of lung cancer? Because you have now been on the other side and you are one of the biggest champions for the cause. So any message for early detection would absolutely, be very critical. Absolutely. You said that it's a, it's a small effort. Right? It's an amazing effort. So Vante, I'm so glad that you're pursuing you know, this project, and I so much look forward to learning about your results at World Lung Conference in Barcelona in just a couple of weeks. Uh, 
And yes, in the early detection is so important. And now we have CT-based lung cancer screening for special populations at the highest risk for lung cancer. Those are patients who have been heavy smokers in the past. But we are understanding that there's other patients at risk for lung cancer as well. Anyone with lungs can get lung cancer, as the saying goes, right. you know, very correctly. And especially in countries like India, where a large proportion of patients diagnosed with lung cancer are not, are not smokers. Many times they might be women who've never smoked, but are predisposed to lung cancer and develop a very particular type that can respond very well to precision medicine. Additional efforts, additional research is so important, and that's what you're doing with the liquid biopsy. That's correct. And maybe that's not the reality for everyone at present, but in the coming years, thanks to your research, I'm sure we can bring lung cancer screening to an even larger community. But for now, you know, certainly listen to your doctors as to whether you're a candidate for lung cancer screening. It's so important because if you can detect lung cancer at an earlier stage, our chances for cure are at the highest. Right. Early stage lung cancer can be cured at a very high rate. And even for early stage lung cancer, now we can add the benefits of precision medicine and immunotherapy for the right patients to achieve an even higher cure rate. So, so important to, to pursue lung cancer screening if that's appropriate for you. Fantastic. I think the message is loud and clear. Early detection saves lives. With early detection, we can transform the outcomes of lung cancer. We have to take preventive measures by quitting smoking. But anyone with lung can get lung cancer is what we just heard from Dr. Balaj Halmos. Anyone with a lung can get lung cancer. Be breath aware. Be lung aware. Reach out for lung cancer screening if you have symptoms that point like you have anything to do with lung cancer. And of course, smokers absolutely need to quit smoking. And those who have had a smoking history are, in, are, are at high risk for lung cancer and must get yearly screening. Finally, we've come to the end of the podcast. I would like to take one final message from you, uh, Balaj, for the public. And you can speak to them directly. The one message that you would want to leave them with in a country where there is a certain degree of disappointment, large degree of disappointment uh, regarding lung cancer, if at all there is a lung cancer awareness. Yeah, I think the message is what we stated previously, that the time for nihilism is over. It's over. There's just so much improvement in the field that we want you to benefit from it, okay? So, again, listen to your doctors, go for lung cancer screening if you're appropriate. If you have any symptoms, if you get diagnosed with lung cancer, you can trust the medical teams in India to be able to bring you the latest advances with precision medicine, with immunotherapy to offer you the best outcome. So this is the time of hope, and this is the, ha the time, you know, for, 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 for the rainbow. Uh, you know, this is a new era, you know, for lung cancer management. Great wonderfully said. Really grateful for you to have made time today to record this with us. And as we say in India, Dhanyavad. Thank you, Dhanyavad. <laughs>